everybody, it's me, Zach. Under that blanket is Potato, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, I am so excited for a brand new season of the 1,000 Pound Sisters, the critically acclaimed, future Emmy-nominated, Tony-nominated, Oscar-nominated, hit reality television show starring our faves, Amy, Tammy, Amanda, Misty, Chris, Chris's wife, Brittany, I guess Michael, <laughs> all of our faves, except Michael, he's not our fave, he's, I'm just saying it now to, to be clear, not our fave, not our fave whatsoever. Anyways, a new season has premiered, and of course, I am back, back, back again to cover it here on my channel. As a few programming announcements, I have covered every single episode of the 1000 Pound Sisters that has ever aired here on my channel, and I have a playlist of Slayton Sister content that includes content from when they were just YouTubers before they ever had a show. It includes content of recaps of the show, and it also includes stuff that has happened while the show has not been on air. Specifically, just so you know, um, I did a, a reaction to the trailer for this season where we talked about some stuff, and then since that trailer, I also did a whole entire video about how Amy Slayton was on TikTok smoking with one of her kids in her lap and also had introduced this like brand new boyfriend that is in her life as well. So there are things that are obviously continuing on in the lives of Amy, Tammy, and the rest of the Slayton crew, and I have tried to make those updates occasionally as they came up on my channel, but those videos never get the same kind of traction when the season isn't currently airing as, as the videos that I make when they are airing. So just in case you missed that stuff, I did cover that. I'll leave a playlist and a pinned comment and down in the description box below. And I guess kind of on that note, I do want to preface that I'm watching this season knowing that a few major things have happened in the lives of Amy and Tammy since they filmed this season, and I assume are going to show up on this season. One of those major things, and I'm, I guess I'm gonna say that I'm gonna tell you about them, so I guess maybe spoiler alert if you don't want to know, but it's so hard to not have an opinion about what's happening on the show without acknowledging that I do already know that these things happened. One of those things is that Amy and Michael do separate. I, I guess I already spoiled that a little bit because I talked just moments ago about how Amy has a new partner. And I do have to say that like, w without putting Amy on blast, like she shared details about that in the past with me. And I do know that it's messy and I am worried about like what that is gonna look like on camera, what we're gonna see of all of that. I know that it's gonna be a very emotional season in regards to what goes on between Amy and Michael splitting. I mean, even just in this first episode, I was really feeling for Amy because it's it's very clear to me at least that she is like at her absolute wit's end when it comes to the pressures of being a mom, of being a wife, of taking care of various family members, this, that, the other. The other thing that it's gonna be very hard for me to like not acknowledge is that Tammy's husband, Caleb, who is a part of the show, passes away. And that is super relevant to some of the things we're gonna be talking about today. And I didn't actually ever make like a dedicated video to that when it happened because I didn't have a lot to, to add outside of like sending my general condolences to Tammy, Tammy's family, and Caleb's family. So I just wanted to get those things out of the way because it definitely informs a lot of the emotions I was feeling in terms of watching this episode. I will say the past like 24 to 40 hours have been a little <laughs> emotional for me anyways. I've had like medical appointments and things like that that I don't, I, and it's the winter time and, and I do have a little like seasonal affective disorder and so like I just feel particularly emotional while I was watching this today and, and I feel, I, I did cry, I just need you to know that I actually cry at a lot of things these days. Yeah, it's wild, this is slightly unrelated to the old Amy and Tammy Slayton and the 1000 Pound Sisters, but like I really cry at most movies that I go to these days and it's wild because there's like some drama on my channel because I was like, oh, I'm curious to know, like I don't understand why Amberlynn cried 
at the Barbie movie and then lots of people were upset with me in the comments because they're like, you wouldn't get it because you're, you weren't born a woman, which I, I think some of that's fair critique. Some of it, I was like, ooh, that's a lot. And I was telling Noel about this and Noel was like, what do you mean, Zach? Like you literally cried. You literally cried in the Barbie movie, especially at that part where she was sitting on the bus bench with the old lady. And I was like, Oh my god, why did you have to remind me? Because now I look like an absolute fucking fool because I really do be crying. <laughs> I just cry a lot at stuff. I don't know if it's me getting older or what, or like me just having a big old sympathy bone for everybody and everything, but here we are. So anyways, as usual, when I recap the 1,000 Pound Sisters, I literally, if you see me looking over here, it's because I have an outline of things I want to discuss. We're going to recap the episode and I'm going to do my best to give you my thoughts, feelings, and opinions mixed in with just like the goofy ass clips from this show. Which also, speaking of goofy ass, this show and the way they title episodes, I don't always pay attention to the titles, but this episode was called Bringing Home the Bacon, and it's literally the whole episode is about Tammy coming back home and leaving the rehab facility. So essentially, TLC is calling Tammy a pig. Please be fucking serious, TLC. Anyways, the episode starts off at the rehab facility with Tammy and Caleb, who were married at the end of the last season. And they talk a lot about why they can't wait to be home together, and also talk about how they're not allowed to sleep in the same bed together because of safety reasons. But I just want to let you all know that that doesn't stop Caleb from making comments about how Tammy is going to somehow ride him. Remember, I told you, we got a ride coming. A ride coming? 100% full speed. You look exhausting. Just think about riding. <laughs> Perfect. And honestly, the ridiculousness doesn't stop there because <laughs> we, don't, we don't make it but three fucking minutes into this episode and we already get our first fart comment of the season from Miss Tammy. He's someone I'm comfortable with. I mean, if I fart in front of him, that says a lot. <laughs> I'll burp in front of you all day long, but to pass gas... That's it is true though. I listen, if I'm really feeling uncomfortable in front of somebody, I'm gonna be farting around them for sure, for sure, okay? I I've been farting around Noel for a while, and I, that is not something I'm trying to do on the regular with most people, alright? I I in fact have like bathroom shyness. What is the word? Bathroom stage fright. I get stage fright just going into a public restroom and having to poop pee whoever, whatever, in front of another human. So the fact that I can do it around Noel, we're talking about comfort there, okay? So if Miss Tammy is farting up a storm around Caleb, that that surely is magical, okay? It is giving Gandalf. It is giving Sabrina the Teenage Witch. That is magic, baby. A little hocus pocus for ya. Tammy does open up about how it's difficult to be a newlywed in a rehab facility where there's essentially no privacy, but it is interesting and fascinating to me considering the context of like all of the things that they've said on camera for, for national TV and also just like them flirting on camera. I'm behind you. So I can look at you, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess it does make sense that they're worried about privacy since, you know, they can't share a bed together at the rehab facility for safety reasons. Tammy gives us a brief overview of, like, the, the progress and changes she's made. Uh, she said, I think that she's 430 pounds, so that's about 300 pounds that she's lost through a lot of, well, obviously through the surgery that she got in the last season, but also through other changes that I'm sure she's making in her life, including being more mobile and changes to her diet and things like that. Now, Tammy lists all these changes, and then she goes, and Caleb's walking more, kind of. <laughs> so, uh, that's good, that's good. I think, I think this is the part, though, where I guess, like, the whole episode is just 
laced with sadness knowing that Caleb does end up passing away. I mean, even when she just said that, I'm like, yeah, he was walking more, but like, obviously that still wasn't enough. Also though, right after the walking more comment, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the conversation about how Caleb is walking more. I thought it was interesting that they immediately showed that they were zooming around in their wheelchairs down the hallways of the rehab facility. Roll out. The fight is in me. I'm a Leo after all. One other important update in Tammy's life is that she did in fact get her trach taken out, which does come up many times in the rest of the episode. We talk a lot about her tracusy. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. I have tracusy, tracusy. You let me know how you think we should pronounce it, where the emphasis should be. But I have that typed out in my notes. And, and now that I said it out loud, I'm like, oh my God, not her tracusy. But it's relevant later, okay? Hold on tight for the tracusy content. <laughs> Anyways, Tammy is really excited about uh, the opportunity to go home now that she has her trach out. She's gonna be way more independent and is looking forward to being independent. And she's hoping that Caleb will get approved to have his trach taken out so that he can move home with her. And he does in fact have a appointment with a doctor to see what the logistics of that could possibly look like. We then briefly spend some time with Amy and Michael and her two kids and they're doing like a little family photo shoot. Their little outfits did look cute. I Listen, I, I've, ne I've never had a family to have little coordinated photo shoots with, but I do like the idea of a little coordinated family photo situation type of deal. Most of this scene was used to kind of like reintroduce the concept that Amy is, is getting to her wit's end in terms of being a mother, taking care of the two kids, not having any help from Michael, which was like a theme right towards the end of the last season of the show. And I think this was just to like remind us that, that Amy is stressed, not just because of the two kids, not just because Michael isn't helpful, but it sounds like she's also like helping care for Mama Slayton in the background, which is maybe not necessarily something happening on the show, but something she references. And she's also worried about, you know, what she might have to do to help Tammy once Tammy does make it back home from the rehab facility. And like I said, you can really already tell that Amy is starting to unravel a bit just from this scene. Every aspect of my life is chaotic because I have no support. I'm trying to get stuff ready for Tammy, trying to chase after the boys, trying to chase after Michael. And it's just a lot. <laughs> So the show takes us back to the rehab facility and Tammy's packing up her room, but Caleb comes in to let her know how the appointment about getting his trach out went. And unfortunately, Caleb has not been approved to have his trach taken out and has not been approved to go home. I want to go. I let the world pass me by. Biggest part of my life. Because of my weight. I'm not mentally prepared to leave you. And it's really clear, you can see it easily on Tammy's face, that she is so disappointed. And I think that makes so much sense. And this is part of, like, why I, I felt so emotional about Tammy. There's lots of reasons why I got, like, emotional about Tammy and teared up about Tammy in this episode. But at this point, you can already start seeing that Tammy is feeling very torn because Tammy has lived a life thus far where she has been limited in the things that she could do. She's unable to do a lot of things that a lot of us able-bodied people can do in our lives. And she's just so looking forward to this freedom and independence. And yet she's torn because she just started this relationship, this new marriage with Caleb and she can't imagine having to leave him behind at the rehab facility while she's out being independent. And so I can imagine how difficult that is for her. And then on top of that, you add the layer of knowing that Caleb ends up passing away while he's still at the rehab facility. Um, it's, it's a lot and it does make me very emotional. After that scene, we get a brief moment where Amy is playing with Gage in the backyard, playing with like yard toys and things like that. And she takes a FaceTime call with Tammy and <laughs> they greet each other 
in the most Slayton sister kind of way. Hey, bitch, what's up? Like the old hey bitches and the old Tammy burpin. Yes, let's fucking go. A burpin and shitting and pissing and farting TV show. This is what I've always asked for. And they did not disappoint in this episode when it came to really just like the, the bathroom humor. And I appreciate that. And I really do. And I thank you editors for including that. And um, you remember when I brought up the tracussi? <laughs> Amy can't just be happy for Tammy getting her trach out. She has to she has to make a a comment about it. Oh, oh sorry. Girl, you got your trinket. Yeah. Oh, that hoe nasty. And ultimately, this scene was just to, like, progress the story forward and for Tammy to let Amy know that Caleb won't be able to come home with her. And that leads to Amy telling this, like, really convoluted metaphor about, I think her point is that, like, it used to be Amy who was responsible and, and Tammy who wasn't making any progress. And so she's saying now, well, I don't know. Let, let me just let her explain it to you. Tammy needs to put herself first, but Caleb also needs to. He needs to be responsible for his own self. I'm like, I get that, girl, because I was there. You were like Caleb, and I was like me. Or you. I was her. You were Caleb. Put yourself back into Caleb's spot. Put yourself where you right now is where I was. And now you got to learn how to deal with your own team. You became Amy, and Caleb became you. So we find out that Tammy is going to be staying, I guess, in Amanda's old house. I guess Amanda has multiple houses or homes or something like that and they're getting the house ready for for Tammy to move in they're they're making the bed for Tammy and there's I guess some like silky sheets that that Amanda's a little bit concerned about because they're a little too slick so she she demonstrates some of her concerns when I come and sit down on it like I'm afraid that they might slide look <laughs> When he comes home, Caleb and Tammy are gonna be here rubbing trays together. I just know Amanda knows what she's doing in that bedroom. I just, I, she just seems like the kind of woman that knows that knows what goes down. <laughs> it goes down in the sheets. You know what I'm saying? I don't truly have any like facts or evidence that supports that. She just seems like that kind of girl and I'm proud of her. <laughs> Live your best life, Amanda. In general, all of the siblings, and by all of the siblings, I mean Amanda, Misty, and Chris are, are together and they're discussing, you know, the same general concerns that, that they've always had about Tammy being free, being able to be more independent and maybe like, worrying about maybe some of the choices that she might make. The, those concerns being that like she might choose to eat the wrong things, might not exercise as much this, that, the other. They also take some time to set up a ramp for her, which is gonna come back at the end of the episode. But in general, you know, there's that one scene from when they went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, a couple seasons ago, and and Tammy just raged and had a meltdown over not being able to get up the ramp. And so they're like, we're kind of worried. We're kind of worried Miss Tammy's not going to be able to get up this ramp. We're kind of worried. I mean, I feel like they really played it up. But, you know, I get it. I got it. It's hopefully going to be something she can overcome once again. And then the most important part of this scene. Well, I don't know if it's the most important part. But I, I don't know if you realize. I kind of talked about this a couple seasons ago whenever Chris started talking about wanting to get surgery. We're really just going into the whole family getting surgery because Misty and Amanda make an announcement specifically to Chris that apparently they've been going and seeing Dr. Smith, the same surgeon that did surgery for Tammy. Apparently they've been going to appointments with him to potentially get surgery and they just have one more appointment to determine whether or not they can get some surgery. And I just, I mean, I know it's just for the, the TV and that Chris probably already knew about it, but I just think it's wild that TLC really wants us to believe that they've been going to these appointments and Chris didn't have any idea. You know, it's kind of silly. 
<laughs> it's kind of goofy. But anyways, if you didn't know, this has been brought up before, but in the past, Amanda did have gastric bypass surgery already, or it might not have been specifically bypass surgery, but she had some kind of weight loss surgery in the past, and she's hoping to get it revised by Dr. Smith. And Misty is also trying to do this because she wants to get off of insulin. And then here's the thing that I think is so interesting about this whole conversation, because out of nowhere, they suddenly decide after seasons and seasons of trying to hide the fact that all of this family probably smokes, okay? After seasons of trying to hide the fact that they probably smoke, they finally have a conversation about smoking. Which I also think is interesting in the context of the video I made about Amy just a week or two ago where she was smoking with one of her kids on her lap. But I guess they're bringing it up because Misty has to pass some kind of like nicotine test. She has to quit smoking and she's apparently been a lifelong smoker. And then Amanda's apparently just a social smoker. It's just interesting to me because there were there were times where like they clearly edited it around like Amy smoking on camera and things like that. It was like a big top. I didn't really discuss it much on my channel, but a lot of people were like, Zach, did you see how they just like avoided showing the cigarette in Amy's hand? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Anyways, the one funny thing about the smoking conversation was that, that they were talking about the challenges of quitting smoking. And Amanda was talking about missing like the motion of smoking. Well, I feel like for me, it's it's not the cigarette so much that I miss as it is the, the motion of, look. <laughs> 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 I, I miss that too, damn. And damn girl, I miss that motion too, girly. So <laughs> relatable, Queen Amanda. And of course, Chris is still trying to get skin surgery. That was a storyline he had in the last season. I don't have a lot more to say about that. And he also, I will say, what I will say about Chris and really truly also Amanda is that they both are very grounded. And Chris is very grounded and is like, has a conversation at this point about being concerned about the separation of Tammy from Caleb and basically talking about how like that might impact Tammy's mental health and put her in a like depressive state and, and that those things, things like that, changes like that can negatively impact your your diet, your your exercise, etc. And it's just kind of wild to me, honestly, truly, that that any of <laughs> the people on this show have the ability to be so grounded, but here we are. Anyways, Chris and his wife Brittany go to pick up Tammy from the rehab facility, and when they get there, Chris was just genuinely like such a like proud toting brother. He was just so Genuinely proud to see Tammy and all the progress she had made. Look at you, drinking all done, gone. Tammy, I'm so proud of you for what you have accomplished. You look you great. Know, you look absolutely amazing. And honestly, truly, same. The same. And this is this is when I really started, like, the whole Tammy leaving rehab scene from start to finish, from this part where Chris and Brittany show up, all the way until she's fucking in the van and leaving, I was an emotional wreck. If you don't know, if you're somewhat new to my coverage of the 1,000 Pound Sisters, I have historically on this channel been been called a Tammy Slayton apologist. <laughs> and I think it's because, like, I, I, what I will say is I've never excused her bad behavior. I think she really treated the people around her so poorly in a lot of the episodes of this show in the first, really, three seasons. It wasn't until the fourth season that I feel like she really turned her behavior around and kind of changed her, her perspective on life. And that really, honestly, truly, I think was a result of her nearly dying. I never tried to excuse away her bad behavior, but I also had an understanding that Tammy was a hurt person, you know? It was clear to me that Tammy had been through a lot. And a lot of the things she'd been through had never been processed. She had never gone to like therapy to discuss those things. She'd never really worked on all of that trauma. And so now I see that she's clearly made so much progress physically, 
mentally, the way she's able to, like, have, like, very sound conversations with Caleb and the other people in her life, it's clear that she's just done so much personal work and, like, I am just, like, so happy that people can see that, that she's getting the love and support because of that. It has always kind of sat with me the, the wrong way <laughs> that, like, sometimes I do feel like people are only just now supporting her because, you know, she's losing weight. And for a lot of people, I do think that that's, like, the factor for her. But, like, for me, the losing weight part of it all is just a, a sign of like all of the work she's done on herself to get this far. And that's like why I'm so proud of her because I know she wouldn't have lost weight. I know she wouldn't have gotten the trach taken out. I know she wouldn't have all the mobility that she does now if she wasn't doing the work on herself too. If she wasn't probably attending, you know, therapy appointments and things like that because we know that when she was refusing to do those things, she wasn't being successful. And so I'm just so proud of her and I hope she continues to just like live her best life and have her freedom and independence. And I really need to go back to my outline because I've definitely strayed. <laughs> I've definitely strayed, but I just, I just wanted to make that apparent. And the other aspect of why this is so emotional is again, knowing that Caleb doesn't ever get to to leave rehab and there is a, a scene here where like she's emotionally pleading with Caleb to do the work that he needs to do to get the trach removed and come home. <laughs> and at the same time Caleb fully promises her that that he will that he will do all of that. I'm gonna be there. I'm coming home, baby. I don't know when and I don't know how, but I'm getting there. And so it's just like really devastating. I mean, Caleb, at least what was shown on the show last season, not a perfect person, but I I just know that it was really important. He was really important to Tammy. And and I'm I'm just like trying to balance that with like just how proud she must feel to make so much movement and accomplishments in her life and then like also have this this like deeply sad outcome for her relationship with her husband and and all of that happened to her as well. So Tammy does get to leave and in order to do that she makes one final goodbye by zooming down the hallway in her wheelchair and saying goodbye to all the residents and staff which also was just really truly emotional for me as well. Oh no, this plane. Yeah. <laughs> like they even did a throwback to uh, uh, one of the other residents at the rehab facility, Lily, who had been on the show last season. And it just also like hearing Tammy talk about how, how much everybody meant to her and how she'd miss them. It was just, I was just very emotional. I, I don't know if you, I don't know if I've said it yet in this video, but I was emotional. I was emotional. And then you think that emotion would stop when she like actually just left the rehab facility, but then she went to get in the van with Chris and Brittany and she was able to sit and like an actual seat. Like she was able to sit there and they do show in the show some like flashbacks to other seasons, but anytime we've ever seen her in that van, they've had to remove seats. They've had to have her sit on the floor of the van. And I don't know, there's just something about getting to see her, her sit in the regular seat without having to do all that. And then seeing her just like pure raw, elation that she was able to do that, it just like touched me. I'm in a chair! In the van! <laughs> Told me I'm gonna get over here, but I'm gonna... I did it! <laughs> it's like really fucked up that, that the show has me feeling some type of way. <laughs> like a show that can be about pissing and shitting and farting and burping and sexual innuendos and then they show shit like that, and I'm just like, Tammy, I love you. I'm so proud of you. But what's really funny <laughs> to me is the transition from all of that, where I'm like literally in tears, to Chris's wife, Brittany, being like, 
Girl, where are the snacks? What happened to our snack, man? Where did it end up? In the seat behind Tammy. I can't get it. Tammy, how you doing? I'm good. Tired? Yeah. Excited? Hungry. hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry too. But we can't get to the snacks. <laughs> the, the transition was just so abrupt and it, it, it did make me laugh. It, it really did make me laugh. So anyways, the episode ends with Tammy finally actually coming home. She, she finally makes it there. She goes up the ramp that Chris built for her and she's just zooming up that ramp. And you know why? It's because she had to pee. Damn, bitch. The way you shot up there looked like you were going to tackle somebody. Well, get out of my way, bitches. I can pee. I swear to God, if this show ever stops being a pissing and shitting and farting television show, I'm done, okay? I'm done. The rest of this scene escalates very quickly, okay? And very quickly. So they're all gathered in the living room catching up with Tammy. Tammy's holding one of her nephews. Gage is out here just being a toddler, being a toddler, pushing Tammy's walker around, knocking over her oxygen tank. Like, in general, being a toddler, okay? But it was clear that Tammy was very overwhelmed by the situation, which makes sense. She's not been around toddlers in a while. And it's clear Amy's also feeling very overwhelmed because her, her deadbeat husband is just sitting there also not doing anything. I mean, Gage is running around like crazy. Michael ain't doing He's just sitting there looking like boo-boo fool. But eventually they, they get just the siblings, Amy, Tammy, Misty, Amanda, and Chris in the kitchen. They're all sitting around the table. And Tammy's got to bring up this tracussi again, all right? She brings it up and she tells Amanda to finger Lynn it. No, it's my throat. Touch it. No. It's my throat. Touch it. It's skin. Damn, do do it. it. Put your finger in my hole. <laughs> then they try to get Amy to to touch it and feel it and feel what it feels like and things like that. And they're joking about how Amy can't even look at it. And Amanda cracks a joke and says, yeah, she can't even look at it. Her good eye was, was looking at Chris. And the family had been joking around in general. It seemed like they were all joking around with one another. But this really pissed Amy off. The good I was looking at Chris. <laughs> she does say in like a little confessional space that it really hurts her when people make fun of her eyesight because it's a big insecurity of hers in terms of how she looks, in terms of like just not being able to see in general. But I imagine she was also feeling a little bit tense because of being overwhelmed from, from her kids and Michael not doing anything. So Amy storms off and Amanda tries to go and make things better, but I think makes it worse. And at some point, there's a lot of yelling between Amanda, Amy, and then Misty also. Like, Misty Misty starts yelling too, which I feel like we've not really seen Misty yell like that. Oh, no, no, that's bull first of all. You, said you know I was fun just of you, I'm not even making fun of you. She's making it out to be like I'm the villain. I did not make you out to be the villain. I'm you are saying, making me out to be the villain. Oh, damn it, it. shut up! I've always felt nice about everybody. All right. Go home and calm the down. We've definitely seen Amy and Amanda yell in the past, but Missy yells and actually says to Amy, go home and calm the fuck down. I know that Tammy is like, wow, this is not the welcome home I really wanted. And I'm sure it really wasn't. I'm sure that was not a very good welcome home. Uh, but as a watcher here in my home, I gotta say, I, I have, in fact, missed the drama. I have, in fact, missed the drama, Baba. That was, that was a great ending to the first episode. It was a wild ending. Um, I, I do love reality television fighting, okay? I also do recognize that all of those individuals outside of this reality television show are also normal people. And I hope that they've all, you know, found a way to recover from that argument and fight and they made some progress and they've all cooled down. 
and that they're doing great, but I did enjoy watching it. I will say that. <laughs> I will say that. Anyways, that was it. That was the first episode, and then they did show, like, previews just in general for the rest of the season. It looks like it's gonna be quite the season for us, so, so buckle up, besties. <laughs> buckle up, because... There's, there's a lot to come, and I am very curious about what all will happen, to be quite honest with you. I'm very curious, and I'm very excited for this new season. Anyways, that's all I have time for today, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did and you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe down below. I do normally post every week. Sometimes it's the day after, it's usually the day after, but I know these first few weeks of December, I have different things happening on Wednesday, so it might be Thursday, but either way, we'll get to it as quick as we can. Make sure to hit the bell button so you get notifications when I do post. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, follow me on all my social media. I love you all so much, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!